Islam is real. The Israelite school of universal and practical knowledge under commanding General Yohanna presents the Lord's 55th annual Passover. That's right. The Lord's 55th annual Passover is rapidly approaching. Commanding General Yohanna is calling for all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to remember what the Lord did for us by saving us from our oppressors and choosing us to be a special people unto him. The real Jews and Israelites. Passover will be held in Durham, North Carolina. Pay your Passover fee. Anyone 17 years of age or older must pay $200. Come and enjoy fresh lamb, unleavened bread, and the spirit of Christ. Can't wait to see you all there, Israel. Shalom. Gathered to streets and corners, all is feeling righteous. Real particular, nobody else dared to compare to. Train for war, men of war, and war like apparel. Prefer our leaders can't get between us. And we have to understand that as the priests and prophets, these brothers have been telling black people, Hispanics and Native Americans, what's getting ready to come to America. We've been saying the same thing since 1969. Shalom, brother. We've been saying the same thing. And you know what everybody does? They walk up and down these streets and they look at us as just crazy black and Hispanic men who don't know what they're talking about. And that's angry without a cause. But what you're going to realize as time goes on, as the conflict in the Middle East gets worse, you're going to realize that these brothers back here have been right all along. You're going to realize it. If you haven't seen it by now, like your pastor told you, that this is the year of peace and prosperity and blessings when God says war is coming to this earth. Destruction is coming to this earth. Your pastor ain't telling you the truth, man. He's not telling you what you need to get ready for what's coming to this earth. He's telling you what makes you feel good in that moment. That Christian church is a drug. You leave that church and you have a high. And the problem with any high is it takes you from reality. And reality still carries on. But now you're not in reality. What happens when you come down from the high? You have to come right back to reality. That's what has to happen. And the Christian church, they take our people away from the reality of what's happening to live in a fantasy world. You understand? Now we have to realize world, world destruction is coming. And this is not fear mongering. Christ told his disciples this. Christ told his disciples what to look for, what to expect in the last days. You think America is going to continue to carry on the way it's been carrying on now? It's not. America in this way of life is coming to an end. You think God will let his children suffer and continue to suffer without coming and helping them? Nah, it's not gonna happen like that. Why are you praying for Palestine and you praying for Israel what you should pray for is what Christ said. Christ said, not my will be done, but your will. And that's the problem with you Christians. You're so goddamn selfish. Right. And you've been taught to be so evil. And if God can't give you what you want, you don't care about God. You don't serve God. You think God is some damn genie. That's what the church has made you believe, that God is some genie. He's some boyfriend. That's not the God of this Bible. The God of this Bible is a man of war, and he expects you to do what the hell he says. The problem is the Christian church, they turn the God of the Bible into something you don't respect. And if you look at our conditions, you can see that he's nobody that we should play with. When you see little black and Hispanic kids get killed by straight, straight bullets, and you feel that pain and that hurt, that's somebody telling you, you're going to have to respect me. You're going to have to do what I say. When you see the way our people are suffering and dying in the streets, that's somebody showing you, you're going to have to respect me. You're going to have to do what I say. How is it that our people have the highest rate of illnesses and diseases? Huh? Explain that to me. Don't tell me it's hereditary. How, how is it that blacks and Hispanics have the highest rate of abortions, the highest rate of heart disease, the highest rate of high blood pressure, the highest rate of gout. Many of you older brothers can't even walk straight because that big toe is on fire. You understand? Why is it that we are suffering the most? 
because the Lord is trying to tell you, you're going to have to respect me and do what I tell you to do. This ain't about what you want and what you feel. Right. God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments, and we have to follow them. We have to do what he said. It's not an option. You think it's an option while our children are You think it's an option while we own drugs. You think it's an option while our community is in shambles. Do you not care about what's going on to, uh, with your people? Like we live in life as if we are not on the bottom. We're suffering. And that's why we have to have a God that's better than you. A God that's better than that God in the church. Because while you live life trying to ignore the reality, the angels are crying. The most high is upset. The heavens are waiting. You go into the Bible, it tells you that the angels are asking God, when can we go and destroy the earth? You know why? Do you know why the angels want to come destroy this earth? For you. For your sake. You don't give a damn about yourself, but God does. And that's what Christ is coming to do. Christ ain't coming for hugs and kisses. He's coming to save, to deliver his people from danger, from their suffering. And while you're praying for Israel and Palestine, you should be praying for you. You should be praying for our people. We're the real Jews of the Bible. Anybody know biblical history? I'm going to show you something right here. Let this noise pass. I will prove to you right here who the real people of the Bible are. Watch this. Stay with me. The children of Israel, when they lived in Babylon, what was their position in Babylon? Anybody know? The children of Israel, when they lived in Babylon, what was their position in society? Slave. They were the slaves. That's right. The children of Israel, when they lived in Egypt, what was their position in Egypt? Get, get us both the sisters a hand. The children of Israel, when they lived in Assyria, under King Salamanzar, what was their position? Slave. When the children of Israel lived in Persia, what was their position? Slave. When the children of Israel lived in Greece, what was their position? When the children of Israel lived in Rome, what was their position? Who served in slavery in the greatest empire of this society? Ask yourself, what's the greatest empire on the face of the earth today? America. Who served as, as slaves of the greatest empire? We did. You think all of a sudden history gonna change up? We are the same people in this Bible. The slaves that built America are the true Jews of this book. It ain't them devils that live in the land of Israel. People taking their lives, oppressing people. We have always been the same people. And here's what your pastor is supposed to be breaking down to you. Because this is what you need to change your life. This is the information you need to stop getting high. This Bible ain't about singing and dancing and shouting. When the hell shouting pay the bill? When the hell singing pay the bill? I wish they could. Black people would pay all the bills because we some singers and dancers. But singing and dancing don't pay bills. Right. Singing and dancing don't put food in mouths. Singing and dancing doesn't stop bullets from flying. You know what does that? Changing our behavior. Changing our minds. And that is what's found in this Bible. It has the information that we need on how to do it. This ain't got nothing to do with religion. This is practical knowledge on how to fix our lives. And God gave it to us because he knew that we are a people that want to do what we want to do. And every time we do it, we just ran through the history. We become the slaves to everybody else. We want to join everybody else and we become slaves to everybody else. You want to be American so goddamn bad. You want to be a Democrat and Republican. You want to be a part of this place. And guess what it makes you? It makes you a slave to the people you want to be a part of. God says we're better than them. That's not racist. That's what God said. You understand, if you have a child, don't you look at your child more favorable than somebody else's child? That ain't wrong. You my child. I, obviously, I love you more than anybody else's child because you're my child. And anybody that thinks that's wrong, they don't have kids. If you have kids, you find out. You don't check everybody at the park when the kids get to acting up. 
You chastise your child because your child is the one that matters to you. It just so happens that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were God's chosen people. We're his children. And he only cares about us. And I know that's hard to believe because what do we learn in church? God loves everybody. God loves everybody. We all bleed red. God created everybody. The problem is that pastor is not telling you the truth. Read what you got. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For them are holy people. Now I'm going to show you, because once again, your pastor will sit up here and read one scripture and then tell you about all the blessings and happiness and joy God got for you. World War III is coming. And you're going to need in that day men with boots. You're going to need soldiers. I know y'all love to sing and dance. And you think them <laughs> men in that church, you think those alternative lifestyle men in the church are men of God. When things get hard and you need people to go get food and go get water, you ain't going to be able to do nothing with the men in church. You're going to need men that stand up and ready to fight. And, <laughs> and that's what these brothers back here are. You're going to need soldiers, man. You look at any history of any nation, it wasn't built by men that sung and danced and pranced around in some church with a tambourine. Every nation was built by men who put their boots on and did the work, the actual work. You can't find that in church. Christ and his disciples were men that went on the front lines and they were killed too. Make no mistake about it. They lost their lives because of it. They lost their lives teaching what we're teaching right now. You don't think we're not ready to lay our lives down for the God who we serve? You better believe we are. Every time we come out of here, we have an actual realization that this could happen. We could lose our lives. And guess what? We're okay with it. Because the man that we follow, he laid his life down for what he believed in. And we're willing to do the same thing. That's the problem with the men in the church. The moment you put any pressure on those men in that church, they fold. They change depending on who they're around. We don't change because our God doesn't change. The Bible says the Jews are black. I'll say it to you. I'll say it to a Jewish man. I'll say it to a Palestinian in his face. The Bible says the white man is the devil. I'll say it to you. I'll say it to a white man. I'll say it in the goddamn White House to the white president. You understand? Your pastor, on the other hand, he goes where the money goes. So if the money tells him, don't say that right now, he's going to shut his mouth. If the money says, say this right now, he's going to say it. Here's the sad part, you forgot. If the money says, get on your knees, we, he's going to do that too. You better believe that's what's going on. I'm going to show you right here. God says we're better than everybody else. You shouldn't pray for Israel. You shouldn't pray for Palestine. You should pray for God's people. And you should want God's will to be done. Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For them are the holy people. The Bible says that if you're black, Hispanic, or Native American, God says you are a holy people. That word holy means separate. In the Hebrew, it's kodash. Why did God say that you're a separate people? Because like the priest and officer brought out before, God never intended for you to be amongst all people holding hands and joining their society. God wants his children separate from everybody else. He didn't want you to join the ways of this wicked society. Integration goes against what God says in the Bible. I know you, it's hard for you to believe. A lot of you Uncle Toms, you still hold on to Martin Luther King's dream. Well, that dream has been a nightmare and it's against God. Because God said he wanted his people separate. That's what the word holy means. We, for thou art the holy people, unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. God chose blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to be what? A special people. A what? Special people. God said it right here in this Bible. God says that his people are a special people. Now, I thought that we was all equal. Ain't that what they told us? Ain't that what we fought for in the civil rights movement? We fought for equality. When God says there is no equality, right now on this corner, none of us is equal. You better believe that. There's somebody that's the strongest, somebody that's the fastest, somebody that's the smartest. You understand? There's no equality. It doesn't exist. Men and women are equal. Men and men aren't even equal. God says that we are.
have a special deep deep breathing unto himself above what above all people and you never heard this tell your pastor to go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6 and ask your pastor what does this mean ask him why did God say there's a people that are better than the other people you know what he's going to tell you well brother that's the Old Testament that's done away with Christ nailed that on the cross, so now we all the same. No, we're not. You're lying, Negro. No, we're not. That never changed. God said in the Bible, I don't change. So why are you telling people that his words change? God's words don't change. You know what changes? Your church, your pastor, and your beliefs. And that's why you allow all types of sin and wickedness and perversion in that church, that whole house. Because you changed the times. At one point in time, you couldn't be an LGBTQ member and go to church. You understand? You couldn't sit on that pulpit when you lived that lifestyle at one point. But you know what? Because the church doesn't follow God, they change with society. Now the churches are full of LGBTQ members. And you really believe that God is okay with it. You understand? The church got the rainbow flag, rainbow Bibles. They got actual churches dedicated just for the LGBTQ community. You really think God is in that? Seriously, you really believe that God is in that mess, that confusion? He's not. I'm trying to tell you how to love. God is not in that confusion, man, because he's not the author of confusion. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. Right. Ain't nothing else, nothing in between. And if you believe God made you something other than that, that's a demon. You don't serve the God of the Bible. God says that these people, his chosen people are above all people. Read it again. Come on, come. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Here's why, for all you that want peace in the Middle East, I'm gonna show you how this is, the, this is the, the, the master plan right here. All you that's praying for Israel or that's praying for Palestine, you want peace in the Middle East, here's what has to happen. You have to admit that God's chosen people are better than those people that are fighting. And then you have to put God's people back in their rightful land. The Bible tells you there's fighting in that land because the real inhabitants are not there. The Lord says when he put his people in that land, there will be a covenant of peace, an everlasting peace. How come there hasn't been peace in Israel since 70 AD? Because the real Jews are not in that land. Those Israelis, the Jewish people, the Palestinians, they don't belong in that land. You know, that's like, that's like somebody stole your wallet and then two thieves get to argue over who get the credit cards. You understand? Like you, you wouldn't say, well, I want this thief to have it. To side with any of the thieves is retarded. If somebody steals, you should give back what was stolen. Them Israelis and Palestinians, they're fighting because that land doesn't belong to either one of them. And God knows it. And God does not want those thieves to live comfortably in a land that doesn't belong to them. The same way if somebody stole your money, you don't want them to be comfortable with your belongings. Like, I hope you get hit by, you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody steal from you, you wish the worst things on them. I know, I lost my wallet, wallet one time, brother. I said, whoever got my wallet and spending my money, I hope every, everything bad in life happened to them. I don't want you to be comfortable with my belongings because you deserve to bring back what's mine. And that's the God of the Bible. He's not some Christian God. You understand? He's not some Jewish God. He's not some Muslim God. He's the God of the universe, the God of the Jews. And God doesn't want peace in the Middle East while you praying for peace in your simple mind. He don't want peace. He wants an utter chaos and confusion and destruction because you don't belong in the land. Neither one of you. I'm not praying for no Palestinians. I'm not feeling sorry for no Palestinians. I'm not praying for no Israelis. I don't feel sorry for no Israelis. You know who I pray for? You know who I feel sorry for? And this is the, the truth right here. I feel sorry for you, black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. That's who I pray for. That's who I feel sorry for. 
And what you should do, if you're black, Hispanic, or Native American, you should look at the hypocrisy. I'm gonna get right back to you, Uncle Gar, because what you said and what you're bringing out is right on the money. What's going on in the Middle East has highlighted the hypocrisy of white people. You see how much they can care for somebody else's struggle? You see how much everybody's saying, pray for Palestine. The news channels and everybody, they show it how they feel so sorry for Palestine and they can acknowledge how they've been destroyed and oppressed and colonized. But the moment you bring up what America has done to us, all of a sudden we're victims. We have a victim mentality. All of a sudden we're complaining. Right, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. I didn't hear nobody say that to the Palestinians. I didn't hear nobody tell the Palestinians, pick yourselves up by the bootstraps. But when blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans talk about what America has done to us, all of a sudden we're being victims now. We're complaining. That's the problem. What you say? This is a meat tree, this is not a turban. What are you doing to help your people? Because you should worry about, go get a vest, and go get an AK-47 and get a plane ticket and go help your people fight. Don't worry about what I'm doing, they need your help. You're a coward, they need strong men like you. They need it, you, you should be arguing with me, they need your help. Children are And here you are, running your mouth to the slaves. You're a coward, you understand? You're not, you, you don't give a damn about your people. Because if my people were dying like that, I would be on the front lines. You understand, as I am right now as we're doing right now. But you out here enjoying all the, the, the niceness of DC. You probably got a white woman too, don't you? You understand, you don't believe in none of you what you claim to believe in, you're a hypocrite. And that's why we shouldn't pray for Palestinians. You see that? We talking about caring for black people and a Palestinian came up and has a problem with what we said. This is why we tell you, you can't pick a side between two colonizers. Because if the Jewish people were here, if the Palestinians were here, guess what? They would both agree in destroying you.